Hello there, friend and fellow maker. Welcome to the shop. You've got Bill today, and I really want to dive into the nuts and bolts of 3D scanning. Uh, I'm currently working on a project. We'll have a new video out soon, a little something here, a little teaser. If you're one of our patrons or YouTube members and you've been getting weekly updates on this one, that video will be out very soon. But I wanted to talk today about the 3D scanning techniques I used for modeling our satisfactory helmets. This is using free software called Polycam on my phone. You don't even need a fancy phone for this. I've been using the photo mode on it, not the LiDAR, just the photo mode. So any advanced or, or current uh, smartphone should do the trick. The other tools we're gonna use today, uh, first there's Polycam, like I said, which is free. Uh, I'm gonna use Mesh Mixer, also free, Blender, free, and Fusion 360, which you can use for free with a hobby license. Of course, if you wanna learn more about Fusion 360, We've got our Fusion 360 course for sale over at PunishProps.com. Uh, I'm going to run you through how I do the scanning, and then what I do with those files to make sure that they are uh, usable, uh, a proper poly count that Fusion can use it, uh, and then also a little bit of tidying up, hence all of those applications. You'll see that in just a minute. First, let's set up to do some scanning. For our purposes today, we're going to use this handsome bust of my twin brother. Uh, but if you were going to do this uh, with a subject, like your beautiful wife, who's behind the camera right now, they can just sit there as still as possible, probably have your eyes closed, you don't really need your eyes open for this. Uh, and then I will use the phone to just sort of take dozens of photos from all over. And when you're doing it, you want to make sure that you get under the chin, you want to get down low, you want to get up high, make sure you get the top of the head, and go all the way around. Uh, you'll see in the app, it'll tell you how many photos it's taken. I try and take like 50 or more. Seems to be good enough for our purposes. We're also in a nice soft uh, lighted area. Um, that is to say Seattle in the winter. Uh, it doesn't matter too much if you have hard shadows on your model uh, for our purposes again for 3D modeling, but it does look nice if you have really soft light on your subject. Here's Polycam. These are some models I've scanned previously. I can do a new one and there's options, and I want to do photo mode. Uh, when you hit the button, it'll start recording, and then you just wave around your object as it takes images. So I'll show you right now. I hit the button, and as I move it, I can feel it going ding, 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 two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just gonna go all the way around, getting lots and lots of shots from lots of angles. And again, if this was a person, they could just be sitting there nice and still. I'm making sure I get the whole thing in frame. I'm not clipping it off or anything. You do want to have a lot of light. Doing this outdoors is useful because we're relying on a phone camera. And the phone camera is not amazing in low light. So the better, the more light you have, the better. We're at 67 photos. We'll take a few more here as we come around. There we go, done. Uh, 90 photos, that seems like plenty good enough. We're gonna hit done, and then we have some options here. I'm gonna do full size, we're gonna do object masking, which should cut out the background, and upload and process. This is going to upload all of these images to their server where it will do the processing, and it's gonna send me the 3D file. So we just have to wait for this to upload and process. Should take like 10, 15 minutes. Scanning body parts is obviously super, super useful. Helmets, no brainer. You could also do your whole body if you wanted to 3D model armor from scratch that would fit you perfectly. Uh, other things that are worth scanning, I did these visors. These are store-bought visors that we got for our satisfactory helmets and I wanted to scan them. Now the thing with visors is they're reflective and this sort of photogrammetry scanning that we're doing doesn't like reflections. So I just covered the whole thing in masking tape. I drew lines on it, I figured that would help. It worked really well. I don't know if the lines helped or not, but it worked. Uh, and then I measured a critical dimension that I could use to double check in 3D space to make sure this is scaled perfectly. You'll see I wrote 172 millimeters from this corner to this corner over there. And I measured that with some calipers. These are uh, homemade calipers here. You could make this out of cardboard with just a screw and a bolt or a, a nut. And then you measure the distance like that, take your ruler, measure how far that is. 
and then you can be sure that you know how wide this is. And then uh, when you do your modeling in Fusion 360, like I did, this, I was able to double check. I'm actually able to measure inside of the application from corner to corner when I scale it up. Same thing with the head. We measured from ear tip to ear tip on our model. Did that for myself and for Britt when we uh, 3D modeled our heads. And then again, we were able to check that. My head is about 185 millimeters wide from ear tip to ear tip. And again, we can check that in Fusion, which we'll do in just a moment once we've got our files down from the cloud. Once Polycam is done processing your photos, they'll send you the file to download. I've already downloaded mine. Here is our head. It turned out great. It looks so, so good. Uh, and then you can hit the download button here and pick what kind of file you want. I like OBJ. There we go. And then you can decide how to send it. I could send it to Joel if I wanted to. Uh, or uh, what I like to do is send it to Dropbox. So I'll use Dropbox to send the file over to my computer. You could email it. There's a bunch of different ways to get your files. What you end up with is a zip file with a bunch of other files in it. I'll just extract all of those. And the actual file is this texture.obj. I'm going to rename it real quick to Rob Head. And that's the file we're going to work with. That's the actual 3D file. And the first thing I want to do is open that in Mesh Mixer. So in Mesh Mixer, I can import a file. And I'm going to import that OBJ file I told you about. And this is what we end up with in Mesh Mixer. And there's a few things you'll notice. One, it's hollow and there's no bottom on it. We can fix that. Uh, but also there's all these cracks. And there's a super easy way to fix that. Over here, there's an edit button and there is a close cracks button. And if I click that, they all go away. So we definitely want to do that. That makes it all one big solid object. The other thing I want to do is cut off the bottom kind of around the neck there. I don't need all this stuff on the bottom here. So we're going to use a tool called plane cut. It creates a plane for us here. You can rotate it and you can obviously see what's going to be kept and what's not. And then we can move it and we'll just hack him off at the neck like that. And you'll see that it actually fills in the bottom. I hit uh, enter or accept. And now we have a nice and clean head. The next thing we need to do is make this lower polygon count because Fusion 360 doesn't like anything over 10,000 polygons. And this is about 26,000, I'm sorry, 53,000. Uh, there's a way to reduce in Mesh Mixer, but I can never get it to work. So instead I'm going to uh, export our model here and we'll do that work in Blender. I'm saving this as an OBJ file and I'm noting that it is the edited version. I'll save that out. Next we'll take our OBJ file, we're going to import it into Blender here. And uh, we're going to use Blender to decimate it. So this is our file there, we'll just select it and in the modifier tab over here we're going to add decimate and for this I'll just do like 10% uh, or 0.1 and it's going to knock that down to a much lower polygon count. And then we can export it from here as another OBJ file. File export OBJ and then save it. I'll save it with the word decimated in it so I know that's the correct one. You see I already did that already. And now we have a file that's finally ready for Fusion. So if I pop over to Fusion, I can go to Insert Mesh, find our file right there, our decimated file and it'll plop it right down for us. Uh, this is really teeny tiny. Uh, we will have to scale it. Um, I'm going to rotate it and uh, scale it up a little bit before, well, I guess we can't scale it here, but I'm gonna rotate it and get him as centered as possible before we do any more scaling. So we'll just plop him right about there. That looks good. Uh, now, remember we measured from ear to ear we can do the same thing here using the measure tool. And I'm going to click on the tip of my ear here and the tip of my ear over here. And you can see that that is 0.177 millimeters apart. That's teeny tiny. It should be, uh, it should be 170, I think 180 millimeters wide. So this needs to be scaled up and we'll do some, we'll do some math to figure out exactly how much uh, scaling up needs to get done. 
Here's our ratio calculator. So our ears are supposed to be 180 millimeters apart. They are 0.17. So if that's currently 100%, then what we need is this much, <laughs> which uh, in fusion would be 1016 scale. So when we go to modify uh, scale, I can select our guy here and go 1016, <laughs> much, much bigger. We want it to be uniform. And if I zoom out, we have a giant head. And if we check our ears from tip to tip, we can see that they are 181 millimeters apart. That's pretty close. I could fine tune this a little more if I wanted to, but we now have a head that is the same representation as my head. Uh, scaled perfectly, so anything that I 3D model over this uh, will fit over my head, which is terrific. Uh, and that includes anything else I want to import here in scale, like I showed you that visor earlier. Once you have your scaled body part or off-the-shelf part in something like Fusion 360, the sky's the limit. You can do all your 3D modeling and be confident it's going to be the right size. Uh, you could even skip Fusion if you're familiar with Blender and do all your modeling in Blender uh, as well. This is a great technique. I'm 3D scanning everything now. As quickly as I take a photo, I'll 3D scan something. It's really fun to do, so I encourage you to get into it. And all of the tools that we use today can be used completely for free. So I encourage you to dabble and try it out. Uh, this feels like some really crazy tech. I can 3D scan stuff with the phone in my pocket, and it's just bonkers. Uh, I hope this is useful to you. Uh, like I said before, we have our uh, Fusion 360 3D modeling course. It's an introductory course, just four hours long, and it's just what you need to get started making props for 3D printing. Uh, that'll wrap it up for us in the shop today. Hope you enjoyed this one. Look forward to that new build coming out soon. Very excited to share that with you. And a special thank you to the members of our Extra Credit Club. Without them, we wouldn't be able to make these videos. So thank you for the support. If you'd like to join, there's a link down below. You can join on Patreon or right here on YouTube. Thanks again so much. Happy crafting, and we'll see you in the next build.